Welcome back guys, it's Bernard Costa with Mark here. Mark here. Let's go straight up to what's up in the NBA. What are the topics, Jerry, that we're going to talk about? Let's start with the Lakers and a big thing just happened just a few days ago. LeBron James surpassing Michael Jordan in most points scored in the NBA. What do you guys think of the whole, um, whole, the whole you know, memorable moment for LeBron James passing Michael Jordan? To me, it's, it's the fact that when he started in the league, he was known as the guy that can just do an all-around all, all game. A lot of people have recognized him as a, a guy that just gets everyone involved, a guy that makes everyone better. He was more of a prototype coming out of a Magic Johnson rather than a Michael Jordan. But to see him surpass, you know, in terms of Michael was known to be a scorer. Michael was known to be a go-to guy and, and to get buckets when you need him to. And for someone like LeBron, who was known to be an all-around making everyone better, a, pa a gifted passer, IQ level really high. To be able to surpass uh, Michael Jones just says a lot about how good LeBron has been consistently throughout the past. Like he's been technically almost the best player in ever for about a decade, mm -hmm. which is a very long stretch for a player to have. I mean, a lot of players have never been able to, and then not even, I mean, Jordan was great, but he was... He had a stretch where he took a break, and, and Magic Johnson was great, but um, it never lasted for at least a decade, and LeBron just goes to show in terms of how gifted he was in terms of his body, his work ethic, his all-around game, his IQ, and um, as much as I'm not a big fan of LeBron, you just have to respect the fact that to be able to be known as a passer and, and not known to be a scorer and still be consistently be in the conversation and surpassing the, the person that we've all known to be the greatest scorer of all time that's just impressive to me yeah, yeah. even he he felt like um, you know even he got emotional in the mm -hmm. game mm -hmm. to see him like you know i guess if i work hard for something and you see it's working i would be emotional too what do you guys think of that like being emotional mm -hmm. about something that he, breaking the record like Michael Jordan. I mean, he, it means a lot to him. Yeah, right? He was obviously in the bench. Yeah. Like, who knows if he was crying, but he got emotional, right? He, he was writing he was writing shoes homage to Michael Jordan. And even his yeah. uh, post-game con uh, press conference, he was talking about Michael Jordan a lot, how he has idolized people, uh, yeah. idolized him, yeah. and he wants to take that next step and be like, I, I could be yeah. that Michael Jordan to someone, right? Yeah, since he, kids, he nowadays, drafted, right? kids nowadays are going to look up to LeBron now, because mm. he's like taking over and they're gonna look at LeBron James like how many of us or older people have yeah. been looking at Michael Jordan uh, before um, and then I just want to I know like the game didn't uh, have a good outcome but I want to see a, a bigger reaction when LeBron James hopefully and he probably will be the most uh, uh, make that mark where he scores the most points in the NBA yeah. and pass surpass Kareem mm. now Mm. That's gonna probably happen. That's gonna be hard. But yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be hard, but I think he's gonna yeah. make it. He has, he has that body. Yeah. I mean, he's gonna be able to do it with his health and everything. Yeah. But well, Kareem had like a long <laughs> career. He had like twenty years, twenty something years. So yeah. that's and LeBron is on his thir uh, sixteen, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but yes, yeah. it's this goes to testament. I mean, yeah. if you really uh, understand LeBron's story, come on, he came up from a, a really tough situation growing up as a child with, you know, a single parent and, and the fact that where he grew up in in Cleveland, what he had to go through as a child, he could have turned out completely yeah. different and he could have, you know, taken that situation that he was in and completely turned it into a, a negative situation. Yeah. But he was able to come out from that and to have the mindset that he had. I mean, if you really look at his career, never had any issues with regards to uh, off-court and maybe there's a lot of drama in court just because of the standard that he sets for you and the fact that the moment you have him on your team, it's either championship or bust. The moment you have him on your team, you got to step your game up. The moment you have him on your team, uh, you got to build around him. And, and to be able to have that kind of standard and to have that kind of presence and to be able to do that consistently for a decade and, and coming out of a situation, it just goes to show. And, uh, and it's a testament to his talent. It's a mm. testament to his IQ his mindset and his approach to the game and it's something that I think a lot of kids nowadays are going to look up to mm -hmm. because the fact that to, be, to him to be able to grow up in that situation and still come out on top and still be someone of a role model mm -hmm. to a lot of kids starting his own school, I mean, opening up in a school it's just on and on and off court he's done probably one of the most impressive things uh, aside from his basketball accolades. I know, adding, adding towards what you, you were talking about how controlling the, his decade throughout the NBA career, I mean he technically kind of carried most of the, his teams he's been on, mm -hmm. right? 
he carried the Eastern Conference. He took over the Eastern Conference Finals. That like the Eastern Conference Finals yeah. should be LeBron's finals. Like <laughs> he made it eight times. It should, yeah, basically, <laughs> um, he carried his team. He like that one, the Cleveland uh, win, the first championship for Cleveland in almost a uh, century, right? Yeah. Um, he even said like uh, in, in an episode of his the shop, I guess. Um, he's like after that win, cementing it, like finally grabbing a ring for or championship for Cleveland. He feels like he's the best in in the game now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so after cementing his legacy with that championship, and, and he carried his team. What well, like there are some arguments with him having, building his team around him, where he had Ray Allen in he, Miami, he had Kyrie Irving in Cleveland. He still had the momentum. He had the drive to carry his team to the Eastern Conference Finals every single year. Now he's in the Western Conference. Things are different, but you can't. Uh, surpass the fact that he has been doing this forever uh, for a it long just time. That he, it just sucks that he's in a bad team right now. I just don't want his career mm-hmm. to be like mm-hmm. like Kobe. What mm-hmm. happened to Kobe when mm-hmm. like his last two years he got hurt and then mm-hmm. he couldn't even go back. What to do you playoffs. think was the reason behind? I guess yeah. what the result of the Lakers season so far. Like who's you know is there someone to blame? Is there a reason behind why they failed the season? I think when it comes to the Lakers this season, obviously we. If you're a Lakers fan, you know you weren't going to, I mean, you got to know you weren't going to win a championship right away in your first year in like a four-year contract with LeBron James. Um, I think the drama with the trade situation with Anthony Davis and the rumor or the spillage of all these players for this one piece in New Orleans, I think that broke up like a chemistry or team bonding-wise with the Lakers. And you can see now it still hasn't really... Uh, worked out. You could see in the, the game against Denver a few days ago, Rondo wasn't sitting. He wasn't really sitting with yeah. his teammates, right? So you have to be. Marcus Jackson even said on the telecast, "Someone has to step up, be a leader. It ha- maybe it could be LeBron. It could be someone else. Luke Walton, step up and have probably like, yo, Rondo, come come back in on, on the bench, sit with us. I know we're we're losing. We're it's, uh, t- it, the game is over. Just come back, come sit with us. It's right, stuff yeah. like that." Stuff like a little stuff like that. We need to build up together. Even though they're not going to make the playoffs anymore, they gotta build up some, you know, team chemistry back again. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, you can blame Magic and Palinka for that one because before the season they had uh, Randall, and then D- they traded D'Lo, and then they traded um, Brook Lopez, traded or let go, and those three players that can actually help LeBron because even Brook Lo- uh, Lopez in Bucks is shooting threes like lights out now, mm-hmm. and then D'Lo is cra- going crazy and. Nets and bringing them to the playoffs, mm-hmm. and then Randall be, be having like 40 or 30 points in like the last two months or something. And this three players that could actually help LeBron, mm-hmm. and then that Pelicans trade, mm-hmm. and then all this happening, like mm-hmm. Luke Walton can't control the team anymore, and and you don't know what they don't know what to do anymore. Mm-hmm. So now they're gonna fire Luke Walton. As an escape yeah. He's basically an escape yeah. yeah, all, 100%. Yeah. I think it was an experiment by Rob Linke and Magic yeah. Johnson to see what they, how they can utilize LeBron, and it completely failed because LeBron's, you know, at the end of it all, your game is your game. LeBron's game was that he was going to be the maestro and he controls the pace and the team, and then he's surrounded by really good shooters and really good defenders. And they tried to mix it up where he played him. They played him off the ball and surrounded him with ball handlers. But they're not great shooters, and that just kind of did not work out. And at the end of it all, it was an experiment that they tried, and it didn't work, right? So...